Thank you so much for a warm welcome, colleagues. As Dr. Machila has indicated, I'm in the field of languages, and I believe that um, there's an overlap. Languages meet, you know, they meet the Indigenous epistemologies. As he has introduced my title, my title is Indigenous Epistemologies. Epistemologies, a cornerstone in the preservation, adaptation, and advancement of African languages in the digital era. So my content will include my introduction and why I'm advocating for cultural significance of our indigenous languages. And why I am saying that we need to push for community-led community initiatives that infuse indigenous epistemologies and African languages. Also, I will be talking about several innovative tools that can be used to, to advance our African languages. Also, I will be talking about localized digital literacy and why it is important to have a multilingual um, brain or multilingualism in our education sector. I want to start with an interesting quote that I love, that everybody who has been in my talks knows that I speak about. Gungi Watiyonga says, if you know all the languages of the world and you don't know your mother tongue or the language of your culture, that is enslavement. My question today as we are continuing that our languages are the cornerstone of, of indigenous epistemologies. What is it that is preventing our languages to be our languages that we can use on a daily basis? Do we know the languages of the world? Do we also know our mother languages? Some call it a father language. It's a debate that we'll talk about. But I believe that Ngugi Watiyonga was right to say, if you know all the languages of the world, but you don't know your mother tongue or the languages of your culture, you are suffering from enslavement. Now, what do we mean when we're talking about the link between African languages and indigenous epistemologies? The relationship is characterized by several keys that I believe are there and that, that are integrating these two indigenous knowledge systems. However, now that we are talking about these two in the digital era, Technology shapes how we communicate. Right now, we're using terminal technology. And um, Doc, next time when we do these sessions, please shout out to me because at the Northwest University, we have interpretation services where all our meetings can be interpreted into the indigenous African languages. So next time, shout out to me. And also, um, what do we mean that our indigenous languages in the indigenous, in the, in the, digital age, they must play an, a pivotal role. What do we mean? Because we know that in South Africa, the system has degraded our African languages, linking it to the, our indigenous knowledge system. They've been degraded. And now it's time for, for us to work together, to work together that we have to make sure that African languages contribute to the knowledge production. This is what we call re-intellectualization of African languages. African cultures and languages in the past were taken to the back seat. But in this era, we need to put our heads together as academics and say, what can be done to make sure that we re-intellectualize our languages? Also, with the advent of democracy, we need to re-emphasize the importance of our African languages. It's very, very, very important. We need to link them with indigenous epistemologies. The use of African languages in knowledge production and dissemination is important. Language is a key. I believe that the, the key to everything is the languages. It's our African languages. It is through our languages that humanity can dialogue with one another and come to a consensus about the new future. I always quote the saying that 
if it was not for language translation and interpreting, we we'll would be bordering in provinces that we could not communicate with one another. So languages plays an important role. It is a common knowledge that African languages discord is represented in a tug of war. These languages, our African languages are in a tug of war with English. The hegemony of English is making us feel like our African languages are not adequate enough. Also, we find our African languages having to nav navigate between being indigenous and be somebody will say, how do we qualify them? Are they indigenous African languages or are they African languages? I say, as long as we recognize that they are African, it's very, very important. Now, we have now, in terms of our language um, development, we have important cultural influences that do not necessarily belong to our languages. We have imported them. We now live with what we, what with what Nkadime and Magale like call African cultural cosmologies that are centered around foreign and important cultural and important cultural influences. And I believe that now I will provide a way forward. Now, how do we infuse? How do we infuse indigenous epistemologies into preserving African languages? And I want to say our languages are carriers of culture, whether you want to believe it or not, without our languages, culture is non-existent. Without our African languages, our culture is non-existent. Now, how do we now talk about infusing indigenous epistemologies into preserving our African languages? Remember, our African languages, they encaps encapsulate our customs. They encapsulate our worldview. We view our world in an African perspective. We don't view it in a foreign perspective or in an English perspective. We view our, 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 our world in an African perspective. African languages also encaps in encapsulate philosophies. They carry history, they carry values of communities, and they transmit oral traditions, storytelling, proverbs, and songs. So we need to embrace these knowledge systems that pre preserve our African languages beyond vocabulary and grammar. This is beyond vocabulary and grammar. And it is common knowledge that African languages discord is, is also seen fighting in, it's in the middle ground, fighting for existence, fighting to be heard, fighting to be known, fighting to be, to be seen. So now we need to talk about how now can we advocate for cultural significance of our indigenous languages. As I've, as I've already said, a language transcend mere communication. They carry history. Now, they are I, they are linked to identity and cultural traditions that cannot be divorced from African languages. Now we need to make sure that the cultural significance of our indigenous African languages is not lost. We need to make sure that the cultural significance of our language is put forth. It is so it is so dangerous to realize that. We're putting the African languages at the back seat of academia, at the back seat of education. However, we need to come and put our swords together and make sure that even in, in education, our African languages are being used. I love the presentations that were done in the morning, talking about the curriculum um, uh, changes that are being that are happening in UNISA. And I love the fact that UNISA recognizes the fact that we need our languages for us to be able to thrive in this culture and academia. Now, I am today pushing us to think and to rethink and to realign our thoughts in terms of indigenous African languages that we need to push for community-led initiatives. Grassroots movement have proven effect to be effective in language preservation. And communities are increasingly taking charge of documenting their languages. Now through uh, indigenous epistemologies, we need to preserve our oral histories, right? Even in our languages, we need to record our stories, our proverbs, 
and traditional knowledge that is passed down orally using this very same languages. They can be translated later. We need to preserve our cultural festivals, which organize the events that celebrate indigenous languages and performances. We need to rethink why only in September do we do Heritage Day? Why only in September do we only celebrate our cultures and our heritage? What is wrong with celebrating and being aware of the importance of our indigenous African languages the whole year? We need to rethink and make sure that we push our community-led initiatives. These initiatives, colleagues, they, pre they not only preserve our languages, Dr. Buddha has said it, they empower our communities to reclaim their narratives and identities. Let's all remember that the preservation of African languages is also vital for maintaining cultural identity. I talk about cultural identity and heritage. You cannot divorce language from culture. Indigenous languages now, they are facing marginalization due to the dominance of global languages such as English. Why do we think that our African languages are not important as English? The decline in the use of our languages in formal education and public life poses a significant threat to their survival. We need to rethink how we, how we talk, how we present our languages. What languages do we use in the public space? How we use them? When we have festivals, what do we emphasize? When we have funerals, weddings, what is it? What language are we perpetuating? What language comes into your mind? It's interesting that the research that we did in the previous years, it's very clear and straightforward. A child dreams and become creative in their own mother tongue. It cannot be divorced from that. Now, efforts to promote linguistic diversity that include intellectualization, which involves academic and technical vocabularies for indigenous languages have to be pushed forward. We have to make sure that our indigenous languages come to the forefront. I love to use the the story of the development of Afrikaans and say Afrikaans is an African language, but its development is different because the speakers themselves took it upon themselves that they will be in charge for the development of, our, of their languages. Now we need to, to make sure that we push the agenda of making sure that African languages are visible. They are not visible only in translation. They are visible as a first point of communication when we talk or when we write or record our oral traditions. Now, it's very, very important to note the following. Nelson Mandela said it clearly and loudly. If you talk to a man in a language he understand, that goes to his head. Now, if you talk to him, that goes to his head. If you talk to him in his own language, that goes to his heart. Now, I ask myself, what has been going to our people's hearts all the time? Because our first point of talking becomes English. It means that we are talking a language that goes to people's head, that doesn't go to people's hearts. It's a food for thought, colleagues. Now, how do we push for the preservation? How do we put for the preservation, adaptation, and advancement of African languages through technology? You know, in the digital age, technology is a powerful tool. And I believe that it's a powerful tool for language preservation. And there are various strategies that we are using at the moment. We are not talking theory. We are not talking things that are not possible. There are digital archives that we need to take advantage of and create online repositories for oral traditions using, you know, these online repositories, they have to be done in our languages to create important linguistic resources and data that can be used later for terminology development. People always say there is no terminology and I always say it is a wrong thought. 
as long as the language is spoken, there is terminology for the language. There are also strategies that we can use like language learning apps, which we can see South African SADILA, which is called the South African Digital Language Resources, has developed these language apps. We need also colleagues to develop mobile applications that teach indigenous languages to younger generations. They are there. We at the Northwest University also, we have some of these apps that are used to develop, to teach indigenous languages in faculty related settings. We also need to use social media to promote and engage with indigenous language content, fostering a sense of community among our speakers. We need to take advantage of our social media colleagues. These technologies will not only help preserve languages, but also help our languages adapt to modern context, making them more accessible to younger audiences. The Digital Age Colleagues presents us with unique opportunities for the adaptation of our African languages. These are very, very important. There are other tools that can be used to, to leverage technology to support language use. And these are called visual reality experiences that we can use to enhance learning by making sure that our users have what we call a cultural experience that also highlight the language factor. Remember I said, you cannot. You cannot remove language from culture. Language and culture go together. And our indigenous African languages cannot be removed from our culture. Another innovative tool that we can use is machine translation. We see now that it's coming up and picking up our African languages, that now we can use machine translation. It's only Google that cannot yet use Setswana, but it can use other languages. We are in the process of making it uh, be able to adapt to Setswana. But there are very able machine translation. But let's also remember that machine translation will also need, will always need a human interference because these are not 100% accurate. So we need to develop algorithms. This is what, what where we need computational linguists that are going to come in and develop this translation apps that will help us to, to, to be able to, to translate our, our languages. And speech recognition software, we need that. It's very important because that is where we will have a rich repository of our languages. The, the problem is that we don't have a lot of recorded materials in our African languages because they get lost. We don't have the speech recognition software that will also recognize when I'm speaking Setswana, when I'm speaking Isis Zulu, uh, we need to have those um, and be developed. And also, I want to talk about language documentation and archives for the present preservation, adaptation, and advancement of African languages. You know, African communities can utilize indigenous knowledge system to undertake extensive language documentation initiatives. Imagine if we use this speech recognition things and we utilize the language documentation measures, how much a glossary terminology can we have? and be able to have mathematics uh, concepts in our language, have concepts that people think that are not there in our languages. Community participation is very key because this initiate, in this initiative, it guarantees that the documentation process honors the, the, you know, the language complexity. And also we need to, 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 to utilize technology and make sure that our archives are accessible. We need to have this accessible, but also taking into consideration how do we access this? Because we need to make sure that we ground and we have documentation and we archive our indigenous language languages, especially the important terminologies and glossaries that are key in our in our spaces. Also, as we use social media, we need to use it as a method of preservation, adaptation, and advancement of African languages. 
Social media uh, platforms are vital spaces for language revival. They are important spaces for language revival. They provide opportunities for speakers to connect, share content, promote their languages. It also gives us an opportunity to have hashtag Setswana rocks, hashtag, you know, it gives us those opportunities, also creates a trend that can be used to celebrate our indigenous languages. For instance, we, we can also have language challenges, also and cultural awareness campaign. Remember, our social media can be used to educate broader audiences about significance of linguistic diversity. Let's not forget Africa's multilingualism and cultural diversity is an asset. We have an asset that we need to really, really um, take care of. And we really, really have to make sure that our asset is taken good care of which is our African indigenous languages. Now, we also need to understand that as we continue, our, language, our languages and our indigenous epistemologies need to provide a framework for adapting African languages into the new context without losing their essence, without losing their meaning, and without making the language lose the standardized spoken version. We need also to integrate indigenous knowledge systems with modern technological tools. And I believe that African languages can thrive in, digi in, di in digital environments. And we need to know and develop platforms that could be designed to teach African languages using our indigenous traditional storytelling methods. We need to really, really push in making sure that we create an important linkage, an important linkage between African languages and indigenous knowledge system, because the one cannot happen without the other. It's really, really important that the other cannot continue without the other. So we need also to make sure that in everything we do, we make sure that our African languages are not left behind. Now, I want to also touch on what we call localized digital literacy. You know, in this um, digital age, to advance the African languages, using indigenous epistemologies, we can inform digital literacy efforts in local context. Our children have to be, uh, lit have to be able to access materials in local context, we cannot be uh, teaching our children um, with about Babi when we can make our, our, our literature localized. They need to know about the local heroes. Then we need to now localize our, our, our lit literary, literary works and make sure that our children or our people understand our local context. Before going international, we need to go local first. And indigenous epistemologies emphasize a community-based approach where we need not to lose the importance of allowing the elders to be our language custodians, where we use them and we help them help us in developing our language further. These are our important language custodians. They also play a central role in teaching digital skills in the local language. You know, people will say, I'm not digital savvy, but if you are a good speaker of a certain language, you can infuse your, your language into the digital space by making sure that some of the things we check, that is it the right language? Is it the correct African language that is being used in that space? Now, we also need to, to integrate indigenous epistemologies into our educational frameworks. And I'm happy that this was touched in the, in the morning. We need to make sure that we infuse, you know, these into educational frameworks. Because by recognizing the value of indigenous knowledge system, educational institutions can create more inclusive curricula 
that reflect cultural diversity. I'm happy that at the Northwest University, we, we have done that and we are traveling the journey of making sure that our curricula reflects our cultural diversity. This not only empowers students, but also validates their linguistic backgrounds and promote a sense of pride in their heritage. Now, what are the key strategies that we can use to make sure that we integrate indigenous epistemologies into the educational frameworks? Number one, through curriculum development, we can incorporate indigenous African languages into formal education as mediums of instruction. Very, very key. For the past 30 years, South Africa is still battling. South Africa is still trying. The, day, the basic education is, is trying its best. The higher, some institutions of higher learning are trying their best, but we need to push harder to make sure that indigenous languages are incorporated as mediums of instructions too. We need to really, really uh, be, be, you know, be mindful of our community engagement services, where we involve local communities in our language teaching initiatives to ensure cultural relevance. Very important. We also need to have policy support by advocating for government policies that prioritize the development and use of indigenous language in the various sectors. The economy of language should not be left behind. The economy of indigenous African languages should not be left behind. And we should always be mindful of this. We should also note that there are some educational institutions that play a pivotal role in advancing African languages by integrating indigenous epistemologies into the curriculum. However, more can be done also, as I've been saying, through bilingual education models, which we have successfully done. And now we are moving into a multilingual education model here at the Northwest University by implementing programs that teach in both indigenous African languages and another language. Even if it's another um, a South African language, that is important. We also need to have culturally relevant pedagogies Designing teaching methods that reflect the values, practices, and knowledge system of indigenous languages. Here at the Northwest University, we have adopted what we call translanguaging. We have adopted a strategy, as indicated by Prof. Likit Makalela, that Ubuntu translanguaging. You need to be aware that I am because you are when we are talking. Ubuntu Translanguages makes us to be able to talk together, though we are of the different languages, and translanguaging between both languages. Now, other innovations that we can, we can look at, we need to understand that indigenous epistemologies promote that language, promote the idea that languages are living entities. Let's not forget that. Our African languages are living entities that should be adapted and should evolve. This means that we need to encourage the development of new terminologies, expressions, you know, and concepts. In and, and as these concepts come in, they also need to be introduced into the digital world. Instead of borrowing, saying borrowing is the, you know, uh, borrowing terms, we need to indigenize our terminologies. This will mean that we need to coin new words from within our language, cultural, and intellectual framework. This borrowing kills our languages. It is not wrong, but we need to, to hone and take, you know, from our cultural and intellectual framework. This can contribute to the development of our African languages and modern and create a fully fledged modern language. And we also need to be aware that multilingualism cannot be looked away from. Indigenous epistemologies also support multilingualism. Many African societies are multilingual by nature. Now, our knowledge system can guide the development of education policies that promote the use of African languages, ensuring that African students become fluent in both local and global linguistic system. In the digital age, multilingualism has to be harnessed 
by creation of educational materials, digital tools, and online platforms that use African languages as mediums of instructions and communication. We have tried and tested this by the Bagonde project that we did, which is a collaboration of the different universities. And we have the Pulukelo, which we used as one of the digital tools that came out from this, that it is possible to have a multilingual approach in terms of education. We also need to be aware that the such approaches enhance linguistic skills, but also foster a deeper understanding of our cultural heritage. Let's all remember colleagues, indigenous epistemologists are not just about preservation, but also about the advance, advancement and revitalization and re-intellectualization of our African languages. They also offer ways to innovate and ensure that African languages grow, evolve, to meet the demands of the contemporary society while maintaining our cultural integrity. Let's not forget that, whilst maintaining our cultural integrity. Now, also indigenous epistemologists emphasize on cultural sovereignty. We need also to allow community to take control of their cultural and linguistic features. In this era where there is digital autonomy, we also need to also include our communities in controlling their linguist, their cultural and linguistic features. And colleagues, we also need to make sure that we remain active participants and speakers of our African languages in this global digital conversations. We must never, when it comes to our African languages, we must never be passive consumers because of the hegemony of English. We must also make sure that our African space, our African languages are afforded a space in this digital arena. In conclusion, colleagues, I hope that we understand the importance of African languages and why we should advance our African languages as a and involve them as the cornerstone of our heritage and culture because indigenous epistemologists are integral to the preservation, adaptation, and advancement of African languages. We also need to embrace technology. We need to put our languages to, to, to understand that we also need to embrace technology and also foster community engagement, integrate our cultural knowledge into the education system, and advocate for supportive policies so that we can create a South Africa or an Africa where our African languages thrive. The holistic, this holistic approach will not only safeguard linguistic diversity, it will also enrich the global culture by highlighting the unique perspective embedded within each language. Each language in South Africa and in Africa carries a unique perspective. As we navigate these complexities of modernity, it is essential to honor, uplift indigenous languages and our and language voices in ensuring that they resonate loudly with our shared human narrative. Colleagues, thank you for your time. I would also like to take this time to say for anybody who wants to be in touch with me, these are my details. I would also like to invite colleagues to our Abantu Batu. African Language Association Conference next year. Abstracts um, are open for you. You can be able to send your abstract details are here. Thank you so much, Dr. Majila.